Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this week's video on Genshin Impact Translation Differences. This week we will be talking about Xingqiu and some of his combat lines, as well as the translation differences in them. Before we get started, I want to touch a little bit more about Wuxia literature and how it may have influenced Xingqiu's writing. In Wuxia literature, many martial arts practitioners will practice a form, and within each form there are sets of moves. And these moves tend to have names, and these names tend to be four character names. Why four characters? I don't know, but apparently Mandarin language loves four character phrases because all of our tongue or idioms are four characters. If you go back to Zhongli's video, you'll hear that all of his moves use a tongue, which is four characters. That's not a hard and set rule, it's just a very common length of words to use for an idiom or for martial arts names moves. So these four character phrases have to embody a two-layer difference. Not only does it have to embody certain meaning based off of the form that's in, based off of whatever context the school or sect is in, sometimes it's also used in terms of trying to communicate with other martial artists. So oftentimes in these stories, when people face off in a sparring match or some other dispute that needs to be settled with fighting, it is sometimes a sign of respect from one side to another when they open with a certain move that shows a sign of respect. Or alternatively, if they have bad blood between them, that might not happen, which then escalates things in a different direction. So when a wuxia writer writes a fight scene, and they're coming up with move names, not only do the move names have to sound pretty, they also kind of have to communicate what the reader might imagine when they read these words. So moving into Xing Chou's uh, move sets and some other things, we're going to talk a little bit about that. His elemental skill, Fatal Rain Screen, in Mandarin is Hua Yu Long Shan, means to draw the rain covering the mountain. Long here has actually two meanings. One is to cover, another one is like cage or like a basket. So you're drawing the rain around a mountain. So if your enemy is the mountain and you're drawing the rain, you can imagine um, an attack coming in from all sides. So Fatal Rain Screen, while I think is a good translation, still misses that kind of communicative imagery that Hua Yu Long San would give a reader if they were to read it coming across the page. All right, his elemental burst is Q, rain cutter, translates to Cai Yu Liu Hong. Remember how earlier I said that Xing Chou was gay and they had a rabbit and we we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, hints about him being gay in this chapter? Well, his ult literally says, the cutting rain leaves a rainbow. So we have now rabbits and rainbows. Checkmate. And I'm just really sad that the rainbow part didn't make it over because yeah, the tie is to cut. So the cutting rain means it's raining really hard. And after it's done raining, of course, the rainbow comes out. For some reason, the rainbow just doesn't come across in the translation. Makes me sad. And on to his passive talents and his constellations. The one passive talent I want to talk about is Blades Amidst Raindrops. The Mandarin translation here comes from Shi Shi Gong Bi. I don't know where they're going with this translation, and I actually don't even know where the meaning on the Mandarin part is because it kind of is really abstract. Gong Bi is a realistic style of painting. When you're doing a uh, Chinese style of painting, Gong Bi is a very realistic form of drawing things, so it's less um, artistic and less flowy. It's really realistic. And Xu and Si are really sometimes used in describing martial arts forms and attacks. So Xu Zhao would be like a fake move, and then Da Shi means like you hit it solidly, something like that. So I think in my interpretation, Xu Si Gong Bi may this is going to be kind of a stretch, is going to, is, may involve referencing that some martial arts forms do draw from the common art forms like drawing, calligraphy, painting, all that fun stuff. 
having things like calligraphy, painting, uh, playing Go as things for wuxia heroes is actually very common. Many of them actually love these arts so much, they become it becomes a weakness. You see this in some of the side characters in the Smiling Prout Wonder, for example. Forest constellations, we do have a couple of them that do not have the full translation, in my opinion. Chengjin uh, is to weave poetry into a brocade, which means he's written so many poems he can make a giant brocade out of it. And this ties in nicely with the backstory of his Feiyun Commerce Guild, because remember, they make brocade umbrellas, which is also the same character, Jin Duan San. So, Xing Chou loves reading and writing. It's great. So, Gu Zhou Zan Jiao, the fourth constellation, Evil Soother. Um, if we roughly translated it, I would say it means the lonely boat to go slay the dragon. Um, but dragon here is really more of a loose translation because I can't think of a good enough word to describe what Jiao is. And even by most of my research, they call it like a flood dragon or a scaly dragon. This is different than, uh, I guess, a true dragon in that these are actually more or less mythical beasts that live where water is. And that kind of fits along with like Xing Chou's hydro vision and everything. The concept here is that Zhaolong sometimes are the were believed to be the problem of flooding and uh, rivers overflowing and everything and causing uh, crop damage. So taking um, the boat out to go defeat or to go slay said flood dragon would be one that would go out and save uh, the farmers' crops from being damaged. This one, uh, the fifth constellation, has the least poetic of the Mandarin names that he has. Yu Shen Bi Men is like, the rain is heavy, close the door. But for some reason, they want to embrace the rain, so wouldn't that be going outside of the area, the interior, like a house where the doors are, and going to go hug the rain? It feels like that they're going in two different directions with the translation here. His last constellation, Wan Wen Ji Ci. Uh, it's just, here is a collection of a whole lot of books or literature, and it's not really hence called them my own verses. That's really an artistic uh, decision, in my opinion, that the translation team took, the localization team took. They were just like, okay, let's call it hence called them my own verses instead of 10,000 books are here or something like that. May knowledge guide you. Hou ji er bo fa. As I mentioned last week, Xing Chou quotes many poets in his lines, and this one is no exception. Hou Ji Er Bo Fa has uh, kind of two meanings. One is when you prepare enough, you will be able to do things right. Or the other one is to be able to know everything so well that you can present it very clearly in small bits of information. If we take it apart, Hou Ji is to store heavily or to store a lot. And then erst in order to buofa means to spread it out or to hand it out very thinly or very lightly. And this line comes from the Song Dynasty poet Su Shi. We're going to go into a little cultural thing here because it's going to reference another Genshin Impact item. Su Shi has another name called Su Dongbo. Su Dongbo has a famous dish named after him called Dongbo Ro, Dongbo Pork. Dongbo Pork has a very famous uh, piece of jadeite named after him in the National Palace uh, Museum in Taiwan. It's just a piece of jade that looks like a pork belly. And what dish in Genshin looks like this dish? It is the Tian Shu Rou. So the Tian Shu Rou also references Su Dongbo. Chivalry will never die. Bu Tan Shi Sheng Ying. This one comes from the very, very, very famous poet Li Bai, also known as the Saint of Poetry. Many of you uh, Chinese diaspora may have gone to Chinese school and know this poem. I don't even need to read the rest because most of you probably already know the rest. Um, this is the same poet who he is quoting who wrote that one. And what this line means is bu chan means to not shame or to not uh, bring shame to. Shi sang is 
actually still pretty commonly used is like on this world and ing would be like ingshong so i will not bring shame to the heroes on the world right he's got this um pride sense of pride and sense of accomplishment that he needs to do that he will not fail the last thing i want to talk about is the title of the poem that xing chou is quoting here sha ke xing Sha Ke Xing, when you take it apart in its translation, roughly means the travels or the way of a martial arts practitioner. Usually when you say Sha Ke, it's these traveling martial arts practitioners who are traveling to do good wherever they go, thus creating many stories and myths. The title is also a title of a book written by Louis Cha Jin Yong. If you watched last week's video, Jin Yong is one of the most prolific um, wuxia literature writers and has had a enormous influence in the wuxia literature world. Many of his books have been made and remade into many movies and TV shows. One of the TV shows from back in the day actually starred Tony Leung, Liang Chao Wei. Uh, he was actually in multiple ones. He was in Sha Ke Xing and he was also in another one called Yi Tian Tu Rong Ji, Heaven Sword and Dragon Saber for justice. 福善成恶, 当仁不让. This one, he quotes Confucius as the Analects, Lun Yu. Uh, 当仁不让 means to do what you need to do when the time comes. Uh, if we take it a little bit more literally, it's to be benevolent and to not budge from that. Uh, is to help the good or help the kind and punish the evil. This is the line you'll get when you switch out someone who is low on health and he comes in. Xiao xing xing shi wei hao means to be careful when doing things. I think he's doing this in a more coaching way than like scolding way. So it shows that he cares. He's a nice boy. I can no longer hold back. All right, I want to talk a little bit more about this one, specifically the section where he says 点到为止. 点到为止 means to stop when you touch. This is something that is commonly used in wuxia literature when people have to either like resolve a dispute or even like sparring match or something like that because they would always say um, weapons don't have eyes, people tend to get hurt, so let's just spar or fight until, you know, basically first blood in a sense. It also has some contextual uses in day-to-day uh, -day speech. For example, in the last live stream, you can hear Da Wei Ge, the, uh, I guess, executive producer, when he's interviewing the lore master for Genshin, he says, ah, it means, okay, we will just cover this very surface level stuff. We don't want to go too deep on it. That kind of thing can also be used, but it's like is kind of like, we're just going to get to this certain point and then we're going to stop. May my final stand be a monument to chivalry. I said last week how I disliked chivalry as a translation for xia or xia yi. Because chivalry implies that you have to be a knight or it has some sort of relationship with knighthood. But xia yi doesn't have any relationship with anything other than being a good person. Uh, Xia Yi Zixin is something like the heart of Xia Yi is something that a lot of Wu Xia heroes have is that they have this sense of doing what is right, doing something for the greater good, that kind of deal. Um, I guess in some sense, the way he says it, Xin Chong Jue Chu Du Wu Xia Yi, is very A, poetic, and B, feels like he's saying, witness me in a very Wu Xia sense. Rain outlines your fate. So he has a couple of voice lines when you activate his elemental skill. Nanhua says it's hard to draw the lines of rain, which means his sword style is either very fast or has a lot of fake moves that you can't find where his sword is going to land. No, my sword! Tai! Guan! So Cai and Duan are two separate ones. I'm just putting them both in here because they're just singular characters that I want to talk about. 
Cai is to cut like his Cai Yu Liu Hong. Uh, it's the same character. Duan in general means to break, but could also mean to like cut off or something. So Duan, he could be like, I'm cutting off a limb, I'm cutting off something else. Another reference to his gayness is Duan Shou. Duan Shou comes from a idiom. Duan Shou Zi Pi. And I'm sure some of you have come across the picture of the lady cutting off her sleeve because cat is sleeping on it. Duan Shou Zi Pi comes from the Book of Han, where the emperor had a male lover that when the emperor woke up, did not want to disturb his male lover. So he cut off his own sleeve so that he can get up and leave. And so thus the term Duan Shou can be used to reference a gay man. If you've read MDZS, you may have read the term cut sleeve, and that's what it's referencing. Witness the power of Guhua. Guhua shi mi. I'm including this one here just for the people who are trying to understand what he says in Mandarin. Um, his voice acting in Mandarin actually has a heavier accent in some ways, so it's really hard to understand what he says. And this is one of those lines that I struggled with until the text came out. Gu Hua Shen Mi is the deep secrets of Gu Hua. So witness the power of Gu Hua actually kind of fits along with this. I have taught you everything I know. So the translation for this one is completely wrong. He didn't teach you everything he knows or he knew. Cheng Meng Si Jiao literally means thank you for giving me this lesson because he just got his butt kicked. And because it's very um, literary and like artistic in terms of its writing and speaking, Si Jiao actually has a couple of other usage forms when you're listening or you're watching wuxia TV shows. Um, you may hear Qing Si Jiao. Um, that can be used as a challenge sometimes when two people are arguing and they're about to like, things are coming to head and they basically have to fight it out. So someone will be like, okay, let's fight. But instead of let's fight, they'll say Qing Si Jiao. It's like, please teach me or something like that. It's a very uh, formal slash honorific way of, all right, dude, let's throw it down. We're going to go at it. I am outplayed. Shishola. The last one I want to talk about is Shishola. It's like, I made a mistake. Um, I like played the wrong hand or um, I messed up somewhere. It's less about getting outplayed and more of he felt like he made a mistake. Before I end this week's episode, I want to point out something that some people may or may not have noticed a uh, commonality between most of the Li Yue sword users and Chong Yun. I say specifically Chong Yun because he's a Claymore user and not a sword user. And that is Jian Zi or Jian Jue or sword fingers. What are sword fingers? Well, it's this hand position that Xing Chou uses here, this hand position that Ke Qing uses here, this one that Qi Qi uses here, and this one that Chong Yun uses here. Well, they are used when people are using uh, Wu Shu, so sword styles when they're fighting. It is recorded in the Han Shu and a couple of other books, such as Wu Yue Chun Chou and Zhuang Zi. These books record forms of sword fighting that we have used in a lot of our Wu Shu practices in modern day. And also, the sword finger is used in a lot of Taoist uh, culture and spellcasting. Uh, you'll see if you've watched a lot of the old 80s and 90s um, Zhang Si films where the Taoist has like the sword fingers and he's casting a spell with it. That's kind of what Xing Cho is doing and even Qi Qi does it. And of course it continues over to shows like MDZS and other more modern uh, Xianxia and Wuxia and Taoist influenced um, art, works of art. And in general, what it represents is a form of focusing energy or focusing your strikes where you want it to go. And I think it's really cool that the dev team has taken the time to animate down to the finger motion of each character, and specifically only to the Yue characters because this is a very Wushu style thing that they did. If you go back and look at Mondstadt sword characters, none of them do this. 
And that is it for Xing Show. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'm just going to go ahead and tell you now that next week we are going to start talking about Chongyun, because I'm not going to talk about Xing Show and then not talk about Chongyun, because they kind of go together. And so that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching my channel. If you like my stuff, be sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends. Have a good one.